Hi, I'm Margaret Ryle and welcome back to the Online Action Research course. I hope you were able to join us for the last tutorial where we worked on finding your action research problem or the challenge that you are going to take on as part of your action research. One word of warning as we get started, don't try to make your whole work environment your action research. Action research is being intentional about change in a small aspect of your work. You can't focus on everything at once. So find that area, that problem that you want to look at, that area in which you want to develop your expertise, and really focus on that. Really, action research is about small actions, not large actions, so that you can really start to understand what the effect of these small actions are, how taking these actions over time changes your workplace. In this tutorial, I want you to think a little bit more deeply about the context of your action research, both in the place of work and in the intellectual environment. Those people who have done research have probably tackled similar problems to the ones that you're tackling and understanding how their work, how their theories, and how their uh, findings might shape what you find in your setting is an important part of getting ready to do your action research. There are two activities in this uh, tutorial and I'm going to describe both of the activities and then send you to the resources to help you develop your uh, skill in completing these two activities. So the first activity is a rich description of the context of the problem. So if you've identified the problem, we've talked about a couple examples last time, uh, lack of engagement in students or maybe lack of community in your workplace or problems with the incorporation of technology into various activities. Once you've identified that problem, then we have to think about, well, where does that, where does that exist? Who has that problem? Who owns that problem? What does it look like in your setting? So you start with a description of the physical setting, and it might be an office, a classroom, a department in your, in your company. So describe the, the physical scene, and you will want to do a close description, exactly where you're working, and then maybe a slightly larger context. What size company is this, or what size school is this? You don't need to use names. In fact, it's better if you don't. A mid-size company in the tech industry, or a large hospital with, with many buildings in different locations. This one happens to be located in Texas and then, or you could say a small school in a rural part of Oklahoma. Um, that's enough, uh, enough detail in terms of placement. This is done so that you can protect the identity of the people that you'll be working with. And in a later tutorial, we'll talk about ethical issues in doing your action research. So the physical space, and then you want to describe the social space. Who are the community players? How do they relate to one another? What's the structure of the interrelationships? What are the roles that people have? What kinds of leadership roles are people engaged in? And where do you fit in that social context? Also, there's generally a history to any challenge. You probably aren't the first person to try to accomplish this goal, and there may be rules or regulations that are, in, are part of trying to solve this problem. So uh, giving us some sense of what the history of the problem is in the particular context would be helpful. And then what resources do you have to work with? What is the technology? What are the resources and times of money and time and all of the other things that will help you develop um, a solution to this problem that you're, that you're taking on, this inquiry that you're about to engage in? So that's the first activity, and writing a few pages on the context of the problem will be helpful at this point. This will be the first draft, and it probably will be a part of your final report when you're writing up your action research. So uh, we'll be collecting various pieces along the way, and so make sure you put it someplace that you can find it later, because we will be using this in your, in your action research report. So the second activity, and it's a slightly larger, more intense activity, and that is developing the literature review. It is a reading and a writing process. The reading is to help you develop your expertise in the topic that you've picked. 
and the writing is to help you share what you have learned, reflect on what you have learned with the readers so that they will understand that you are in fact engaging people in a dialogue about this problem. So you're engaging the readers, you're engaging the people in the context, and you're engaging those who have taken the time to write about similar kinds of situations in the literature. It's always hard to find time to read and to find time to write, but in asking students about what their favorite part of the action research process was, a number of students marked the lit review as their favorite part. And, and the reason was not so much doing the lit review, but the outcomes of having done a lit review. And they re reported things like in faculty meetings or in community meetings, they were able to provide data, evidence in the arguments. They were able to talk in a way that got other people to attend to them in a different way. And they began to develop their own image as an expert in the area that they had chosen. So doing a lit review is an important part, even if you're not doing this in a degree program, even if you're doing this simply to share your action research with your colleagues, being knowledgeable about what people in the past have done, being able to talk about theories and being able to talk about findings is an important part of being a researcher. So I encourage you to take the lit review process seriously. So you'll need to find literature to review and in the uh, resources I've suggested a number of ways of searching for the research literature. You'll also need to be able to collect and record the kinds of things you're thinking as you're reading and I suggested a form and a Google spreadsheet as a way of keeping track of what you're reading as you're reading. And then you'll need to create a structure for your lit review. Remember it's not just simply a list of articles. This one said this, this one said this, this one said this. It's really about finding an organization. There are these themes or these topics or over time this is what has, has um, how the ideas have developed. Be careful about how you use quotes, references, and citations. And there's a section in the resources about doing that. The important thing is is not to try to write in the words of others. Use your own words. This is about you developing your voice, you developing your ability to talk about this um, using the data that you've read. So don't be afraid to paraphrase. In, if you've given citation to the study, people know that you're pulling information from that study. And I list some common problems that people have when they write their lit review. I guess the most important one is to realize that when you're writing a lit review, you're writing about things that happened in the past. You're not giving your views. You are summarizing what ha others have found. Make sure that you're, that you're separating it from your own ideas. Your ideas are there in the, in the analysis and the synthesis, but you're really talking about what others have found. Also beware of words like research proves, because research really doesn't prove things. It supports things or suggests things. And also terms like must and should, those kinds of imperatives um, suggest a kind of certitude that isn't really uh, common in research. So it's much better to talk about that th these findings suggest that this should be done or that there, um, there's a lot of evidence that supports this kind of an outcome. So those are just some pointers to help you as you write up your lit review and there are a number of different resources to help you as well. So be sure to look those over and um, good luck in writing your lit review. In the next session we will be focused a little bit more on the solutions that you are proposing and we're going to look and see how you think that solution is going to work in the setting that you're in. So it will be your chance to kind of think through given the theories that you've read and the studies that you've explored, what's your theory of change? If you do this kind of an activity, what do you think is going to happen? So that's going to be the focus of our next tutorial and I look forward to seeing you there. Enjoy writing your rich description and your lit reviews. See you next time. Bye.